assalamu alaikum welcome to lecture 12 of triple a which is evidence and testing considerations so in this lecture we are going to focus on how do you collect audit evidence this lecture onwards like this and all the remaining lectures under section d which is audit of financial information are going to be super 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 important for your triple a exam why because 70 to 80 percent of your triple a marks is on your section d that is audit of financial information like how do we do risk assessment how do we collect evidence the audit procedures how do we design the audit procedures are very very important lecture i mean in fact the whole syllabus is important but out of the whole syllabus if you have to stress these uh, the area which is very very important which carries huge marks 70 to 80 percent of your triple a marks is this section d so lecture 12 13 14 15 the remaining four to five lecture starting from this lecture onwards is going to be super super important okay and you must have covered some of this in your double a but in triple a we are going to go in depth and this question where you have to collect evidence you have to test you have to design your audit procedure can be asked in more than one question in your triple a please understand this but usually section a b c d are tested in your question one which is for 50 marks in triple a but it could be asked in section b also okay so starting with what are we going to focus in this lecture let me tell you beforehand this lecture is going to be a big lecture because we are going to focus on each how do you collect evidence and how do you design an audit procedure so we are going to go how do you obtain audit evidence okay auditors need to collect evidence before they come up with their opinion in the report then substantive analytical procedure and data analytics we are going to cover that then initial engagements what are the audit, what are the things that auditors need to consider and corresponding figure and comparative financial statement so these are the four areas that we are going to cover in this lecture so first is obtaining audit evidence every evidence has some principle okay this is the principles of evidence that means as an auditor you need to assess the risk of the of your client that you are auditing how do you assess the risk you assess the risk by gaining the knowledge of the business as well as doing analytical procedure okay and you also assess materiality once it is done what do you do you obtain sufficient and appropriate evidence because if you don't have the evidence you cannot respond to the risk after you do the risk assessment you have to collect evidence okay because with the evidence you can respond to the risk so this is the principle now audit procedures okay you design this audit procedures at the planning stage okay and this audit procedures you design in response to your assessment of risk for example if something you consider is very risky okay risk of material misstatement is high then what do you do your audit procedures needs to be more it has to be more extensive but if the assessment of risk is less audit procedures could be like uh, simple and not so detailed okay all the material misstatement the audit risk business risk we have covered in the previous lecture so you can go back to my previous lecture go through it because from there onwards this is the follow-up then we respond by designing audit procedure now you need to collect evidence but remember evidence needs to be sufficient and appropriate you will find this word often sufficient and appropriate sufficient and appropriate so sufficient and appropriate we are going to go in depth what is the meaning of sufficient and appropriate okay to reduce the assess risk of assess risk to an acceptable level remember in the process when you're planning the audit first you assess the risk after you that you collect evidence okay you design your audit procedures to collect evidence so this is the next step now that is at the planning stage what about the review stage later on in the review stage if the senior audit staff okay 
they deemed that the risk of misstatement was not reduced to an acceptable level you have to collect more evidence more evidence okay but that is at the review stage now sufficient appropriate means this okay sufficient means quantity sufficient looks at the quantity you have to decide what amount is enough for you okay whatever the evidence you are collecting should be enough to help you to draw a reasonable conclusion until you don't you are not able to draw a reasonable conclusion you have to keep on collecting evidence that is the meaning of sufficient next remember this sufficiency this quantity is affected by your risk and materiality and the quality of evidence what does it mean if something is considered highly risky you have to increase the quantity you need more evidence from different uh, the people okay and if your quality of evidence matters if your evidence is of high quality maybe you don't need so much of quantity okay but if it is not from the reliable source you need more evidence coming to the appropriateness appropriateness means it measures the quality quality means quality is measured in two scale it should be reliable it should be relevant relevant means whatever the assertions are there that relates to the financial statement okay evidence it has to relate whatever the evidence you have collect should they should relate to the financial statement assertion that is being tested we are going to soon go through the financial statement assertion this has been covered in your double a so i i am quite sure you know what are the financial statement assertion okay reliability on the other hand looks at several factor okay how can you say an evidence is reliable or not it depends on this few factor number 1 independent externally generated evidence is better than evidence that is generated internally by the client you can always trust more on the outside people than your client why because client is more they are more prone to hide things from you okay if they are the one who are involved in the fraud or try to conceal something from the auditor so it's always better to be to collect independent externally generated evidence than internally generated by the client that's more reliable second factor if there are effective control that are imposed by the entity quality of the sorry reliability of the evidence improves then evidence that is obtained directly by the auditor is said to be more reliable than one that is collected indirectly or that or that you get through the client then it is always better to get written and documentary evidence rather than verbal confirmation and original documents are better than photocopies or or documents that are transferred into an electronic form why because something transferred into electronic form could be changed something someone could manipulate the data or someone we don't know who is handling the data entry okay now financial statement assertion these are the assertions and you should know them there are six for transaction and event that is your profit and loss account and account balances that is for your statement of financial position your balance sheets right assertions are six but there are some differences if you see like for transactions we have occurrence completeness accuracy cut off classification presentation account balances existence rise and obligation completeness accuracy valuation and allocation see accuracy valuation and allocation are one okay number 4 and classification and presentation some are similar if you see some like occurrence we only have for transaction we don't have for account balance completeness is for both accuracy is for both cut off is only for transaction classification and presentation we have for both okay you need to memorize this now those are the these are the assertions that we are collecting evidence to test that means we are collecting evidence to see whether let's take sales for example okay whether we have recognized sale whether sale has actually taken place whether sale has actually occurred or not what do we do we collect evidence from various sources to test whether sale has occurred or not so we are testing the financial statement assertion that is occurrence okay one example is sales there could be other thing purchases expenses uh, anything okay in your exam they will give you the specific thing that is being tested now audit procedures for obtaining evidence these are some audit procedures but in the in the next lecture 
we are going to go in depth through some specific uh, elements how do we uh, do the audit procedure for some specific element like for non current asset for stock for purchase or sales for expenses how what are the audit procedures okay in the next lecture this is more general so here first is you inspect the document the record or you physically check the asset then you observe the process for example how inventory is count in a factory you physically go there and observe then external confirmation by the third party in a form of written response okay and this response goes directly to the auditor then auditor recalculates some procedure that is done by the client to check the arithmetical accuracy Reperformance. Auditors sometimes reperform some of the controls or procedure. Analytical procedures is done. And inquiry of knowledgeable parties. So, audit procedure. Okay, now the auditor obtains evidence to draw conclusions on which to base the audit opinion. Audit opinion and all comes later stage. First, you need to collect evidence. Based on that evidence only, they base their opinion. How is this achieved? by performing procedures to you perform the procedure to obtain an understanding of the entity and the environment and also you study the internal control very important is internal control okay because through this you can assess the risk of material misstatement next you test the control also it's just not that you check the financial statement assertion no you check the control first test the operating effectiveness of the control in preventing detecting and correcting material misstatement by performing test of control we are going to go through test of control also in this lecture then we have what is known as substantive procedure this substantive procedure is to detect material misstatement so test of control and substantive procedure please understand the difference between these two there are two different things test of control means to check how effective your control is to prevent or detect or correct the material misstatement and substantive procedure means is you are not checking the control you are checking you are detecting material misstatement okay next test of control so test of control is designed to check the operating effectiveness that we know these are some examples of test of control first you inspect the purchase invoice okay to see whether it is authorized by the management before payment is made or not this is a control second regarding the dispatch of good you observe what is the process of dispatch of good okay to ensure that warehouse staff check the goods to the order before dispatch using test data if you are using it on a system not a manual you check the data it's like you enter a dummy order dummy order is just any order it's not an actual order you enter a dummy order over a customer's credit limit to check that the system is rejecting it if it's over a certain credit limit you have to check if it's rejecting over a certain credit limit means your system is working perfectly all right next substantive procedure substantive procedure is it could be test of detail or it could be analytical procedure there are two types substantive could either be test of detail or analytical procedure now we'll go through it this is to detect material misstatement that means either through fraud or error in the financial statement this is nothing to do with control or something okay substantive test of detail means look at the word detail detail means you are taking one transaction one individual transaction let's say sale to one particular customer you are taking that one transaction you are tracing it through the financial statements to ensure that that transaction individual transaction has been dealt correctly and analytical procedure on the other hand does not take one single individual no it takes the balance for example basically analytical procedure you can say it's like you are checking the trend or revenue or sorry or ratios you are calculating ratios to compare or to see some kind of relationship that is analytical procedure okay to see whether there is some unusual movement or not for example let's say gross profit margin you are comparing gross profit margin year on year why because if your gross profit margin increases year on year it shows that there is a tendency that your revenue is overstated 
okay so analytical procedure will help you to check the reasonableness of that balance whether that balance is reasonable or not and also to sense check of the balance now examples of test of detail let's say purchase invoice if you want to inspect a purchase invoice okay you trace it to the purchase day book because that is the place first you record your purchase right purchase day book from there you trace it to purchase invoice if it is correctly everything is correct amount correctly it has been transferred to purchase invoice that means record is accurate recalculate see just check the opening word of each sentence inspect recalculate these are the words you have to use for audit procedures review recalculate inspect then reperformance uh, observe inquire these are the words you have to use okay so you can recalculate an allowance for doubtful debts using the client's formula only to verify the arithmetical accuracy these are test of detail analytical procedure is more like ratios let's say you calculate receivable collection period and then you compare this with the credit term that you have given to the customer because through this you can see whether there is any overstatement or not for example if the collection period is too high okay discuss this with the management if you feel the collection period is too high you have to discuss this with the management okay now because it will increase the need uh, it will increase the allowance for doubtful receivable also the more and more credit you give the more and more doubtful debt will increase remember that and it's risky it's, it's risky okay we don't promote uh, to increase the collection period too much we never do that now analytical procedure more examples one is you break down the sales by month okay then you can analyze what is the seasonal trend if you see during some month sale is very high at peak at during some month sale is low flat okay this you can only know if you break down the sales by month if you just look at the total sale for annual sale you will not understand that's why you have to break it down by month and you have to ensure that it is consistent with the auditor's knowledge of the business what does it mean some business yes some business are seasonal like hotel industry and all if you see during some month the sales are very high so auditors if they have the knowledge of that hotel industry they will know the sales keep varying so much drastically it keeps changing because it follows a seasonal trend but some business they are more stable they are not seasonal it does not depend on season so there if sale is suddenly high in one month suddenly down in the other month it does not make sense it is not consistent with the auditor's knowledge you understand it if there are any unusual fluctuations you can say discuss it with the management then calculate interest on the loan okay multiplying by the interest by the loan and compare this with the client's figure if there is any significant difference between your calculation and the and uh, the clients discuss with the management now isa 505 external confirmation external confirmations are always preferred over evidence internal in, uh, generated internally from the client because they are more reliable we have seen it earlier right so here these are some examples of external confirmation like bank letter you can request for a bank letter you can request for your receivable circularization okay all these are external and all these are written so they are more reliable okay but remember to make sure that throughout the end of this process the evidence that you are collecting remains reliable auditor should have a control over this process okay now how can they make sure that it's reliable throughout the process number 1 determine the information to be confirmed what information you exactly want to be confirmed you have to determine it next not any party select the appropriate third party for that information then you have to design your confirmation request in such a way that whatever the response you get directly you will receive directly it is sent to the auditor and send the request if the managers sorry if the if you are not receiving any response keep on giving them request okay 
now next if the management refuses the the auditor from sending such a request to the third party okay auditor should consider whether this request by the management is reasonable or not why because in most of the cases this can affect the auditors auditors fraud risk remember in the beginning auditors must have done some risk assessment that this could be due to fraud now it will change if the auditors are refuse to get that evidence from third party okay so what should auditor do they should look for alternative procedure to obtain the evidence if not like this then like through one other way then also if the auditor comes to a con conclusion that this request of the management is not reasonable okay and because of that auditors fail to contain uh, collect sufficient appropriate evidence what happens you have to communicate this matter to those charged with governance you should always know one thing that uh, when you are not able to collect evidence what should you do alternative things you should always keep ready for your triple a exam okay you should you should not be in such a position that you don't know what to do if you are not able to collect something or if you are not able to get some information or some evidence you should know what should you do thereafter that means in this case communicate with those charged with governance and auditors must be alert to the risk of alteration remember even if you are getting external confirmation there could be a chance that even those could be changed fraud could happen there also auditor should keep an eye they should practice exercise professional skepticism even then also to check whether the responses that they are getting is reliable also or not especially if it is received indirectly not directly through the auditor and if it does not come from the intended party if it comes from some other source you have to be more professional skeptical and alert audit sampling auditors rarely test every transaction is it possible such a huge company let's say apple company are taking and to test each and every transaction no it's not possible with such a huge turnover huge company assets it's not possible how does auditor then form an opinion they in fact test the sample they just take a sample of transactions from each element or balance or disclose even disclosure remember disclosure is also counted in audit it's just not transaction and balance also disclosure okay so they take a sample from each and then test on those sample okay but when they are selecting sample few things auditor should keep in mind number 1 what is your purpose of procedure and you have to see the characteristics of the population from which the sample will be drawn that means the sample that you are drawing should be a good representative of your population otherwise it will not serve the purpose next sample size very important you have to select a sample size that is sufficient for you to reduce a sampling risk to an acceptable level what is sampling risk sampling risk means the risk of not coming to a correct conclusion because of the incorrect sample size next each sampling size should get a chance of being selected it's called random sampling you should not be biased in this okay that you are taking only some uh transactions in your sample some you are omitting based on your own opinion no here okay if you have identified a misstatement in the sample when you are performing the test of detail what happens that misstatement will be there in the population also okay because sample is a part of a population only if something is there in the sample means population also will have it so auditor you have to use the judgment auditors have to use judgment to select the sample size sample items for example what items are you taking on your sample are you taking items only of those two high value you have you have to focus on high value or known high risk items see something which is immaterial insignificant low value not so of high risk even if you ignore them it's not going to affect so much but some transactions like sales are very high value more than 1 million or very high risk items you need to include them in the sample you need to test them because those are the areas which has a high chance of having material misstatement okay 
So extrapolation cannot be used when bias has been introduced into the sample because then the sample is no longer the representative of the whole population. What is the meaning of extrapolation? Extrapolation means you are eliminating some things. You are extrapolating, you are not keeping it in the sample. This you can use extrapolation. But only when bias is not there, but when you have taken your own decision, what is there in the sample, bias is there, you cannot use extrapolation. Okay, extrapolation means you are putting some, you are not keeping something in the sample because you feel they are not representative of the sample. There you can use extrapolation, but not when bias is there. It is when it is unbiased. But when bias is there, you have taken your own decision. I mean, you're on your own opinion or choosing the sample, then extrapolation you cannot use. Then you have to take everything. Audit documentation. Every evidence needs to be documented because documentation serves a very strong purpose number one three reasons number one without it we have no evidence without document how can you prove something number two how can you review when it something is not documented can you document something which is verbal sorry can you can you review something which is verbal no third review is a crucial factor to decide the quality based on that you can say whether this audit is of our quality or not to ensure the quality control you have to do review and review you have to you can only do a documented item right now so documentation says you okay auditor has to prepare the documentation in such a way that an experienced auditor who has no connection with that audit will be able to understand the audit work that you have performed by looking at looking by having a glance and also they will be able to understand the results and the audit evidence obtained and any significant matter and conclusion that is reached any auditor if you show them the documentation they should be able to understand they have to be in a position to understand that you have to prepare your audit documentation in such a way that any auditor any experienced auditor will be able to understand looking at your work second audit documentation should be prepared timely because if it's time then only you can give the opinion on a timely basis okay next audit file should be completed within 60 days of the auditor's report and remember there should be no changes in the file after the auditor's report okay but some changes could be made like general administration for example signing checking list that you have completed the file discarding some superseded documentation or sorting and cross-referencing working papers those changes could be done but not other than this you cannot do any changes to the file next audit documentation when it comes to automated tools and techniques now everything is mostly automated not 100 percent but yes most auditors are working towards it so here also the same rule applies documentation is not different from this to that manual to ATT but some additional things you have to take care of when it's for when it's automated for example here what is the name of the automated tool which software are you using then how the data are captured to the system how they how data is extracted and how delivery how data is delivered details have to be given all these are not there in the manual okay then involvement of a third party providers to carry out this data extraction services Now, so we are finished obtaining of data uh, evidence. Now we are moving on to the second part of this lecture. Remember in the starting, there are four parts. We are going to concentrate. First is collecting audit evidence. That's done. Second, we are moving on to substantive analytical procedure and data analytics. Okay. That means through data analytics, we are automatically doing analytical analytical procedure. I told you it's more like calculating ratios and seeing their trend or not. For that, you can use data analytics. Okay. So here, not all the time you can use analytical procedure. Okay. Only sometimes it's more applicable. Like when there are large volume of transaction, you can easily use analytical procedure because you can easily see the relation. Next. When controls are working effectively, analytical procedure is more suitable. So in order to design an analytical procedure, 
auditor should see few things. Number one, is it suitable for whatever the given assertion is analytical proce uh, procedure suitable? For example, if you want to see whether the sale is complete or not, or whether sale has occurred or not, is analytical procedure suitable for it? If it's not, you cannot use. Then you have to use test of detail. If it's suitable, use analytical procedure. Then reliability of data. If the data is reliable, yes, you can do an analytical procedure. Why? Because if the data is not reliable, even if you do the ratios and see the trend, it will be incorrect. Third, develop an expectation and evaluate whether it is sufficiently precise to identify material misstatement. That means through look that analytical procedure, you should be able to precisely say that material misstatement has taken place. If you are able to do that, go ahead with analytical procedure, AP. And see the difference between the expected amount and recorded amount you must have expected something analytical procedure you must have put some expected amount that this is how much uh, gross profit margin or net profit margin i expect based on your understanding of the industry and all. but actually this much is recorded it's too high or too low then you can see okay now if your analytical procedure identify some fluctuations or some unusual relationship okay among the variables with the auditor's knowledge of the business, auditor should investigate this more. You should not keep it like that. You should see why it is unusual. You should see why relationship is inconsistent with the auditor's knowledge. For example, you have to ask the management, inquiry of the management. See, don't use the word ask, tell, no, inquiry. Use these words, okay? Be very familiar with these words, investigate, inquire, review, recalculate, reperformance. So, inquiry of management. Second, after this other procedure, other procedures means when you see you're not getting an adequate response from the management, other procedures you have to use. Now, we are, now I'm going to take you through two examples to show you analytical procedure and data analytics. Data analytics at the substantive stage. Okay. So the first example is of the payroll testing. Okay. Now there are two things. One is payroll and second example is of revenue. So coming to the payroll, they have done through some software. Okay. They have collected this result. Okay. You can see the number of employees in the payroll is not matching with HR. There are difference of a three in HR. It's 132, but payroll is 135. That means they are paying to employees three more extra employees they are paying which is not there in the hr system okay number of duplicate names if you see in hr system it's two in payroll it's four it's more here in the payroll that means payment is done more than the actual employees okay so here we'll see this because remember all the employees of the company okay should be recorded in the HR first. Whatever is there in the HR only will get the payment, right? Logically, that's the right thing, right? So then it is added to the payroll system. First, everything goes through HR, then only payroll. If it's more in the HR and less in the payroll, okay, it makes sense. We can say, okay, not everyone is paid. But if the payroll payment is more than the HR system, then it's a warning sign. Okay. Now, Duplicate. What about duplication? Duplicate could be done due to error or someone must have done it purposely to conceal a fraud. Okay. But we have to check whether the employees have the same name or not. It's possible. They might have the same name. Okay. So now, what are the audit procedures they have to do here? According to this, you can have your own audit procedures. Okay. But let's see what in the answer they have given. First, you have to check the employees. Your first duty is check because both HR and payroll has to do with employees. So you have to see whether they are genuine or not. To check the genuineness of employee, two procedures are there. Number one, inspection and physical verification. Look at the words. They are like verbs. It's like action you are telling what needs to be done. Inspect, do physical veri verification. Always use verb when you are giving some procedure. That means you're telling them what to do. So first is inspect the HR record. 
of the people with the same name and also to establish whether they are the same person how can you do that confirm their date of birth sometimes date of birth might be same then check the address and the start date when they have started this three together cannot be same okay coming to physical verification physically check to check okay physical verification of the employees to confirm existence including verification of the valid id id will be different now okay so assuming this procedure is confirmed okay let's say assume there could be two things okay two assumptions we'll see both assumptions first assumption is duplicate names they are different people okay so duplicate names within the hr are different people with the same name so if this is the case auditor has confidence that the correct number of employees 132 why because for same name okay it's a different people with the same name so what did they do they didn't put that different people they thought is the same name so they they must be same people that's why three less so this makes sense okay so the payroll therefore includes these three additional people which indicates ghost employees of fictitious employees including another duplicated person if this is the case if they are different people with the same name so auditor must now establish whether they are genuine employees who are not been included in the hr system or if their employees to have been or they are employees to have been included in the payroll either through error or fraud there could be two things either they have not been included in the hr system they are genuine employees or they are not genuine employees through error or fraud they have been included in the payroll to check this what are the audit procedure there are some that they have they have written down you don't have to memorize this because in your exam you will not be asked this but knowing the pattern of how to answer procedure will help you for example you also could be given a payroll uh, system of a company then this procedure will help you there okay but never try to memorize procedure because each question is different each company is different so procedures will be different okay but you have to know the general procedure and change it according to the scenario that's the most wise thing that a student going to do for example using audit software you are using a software right identify the unmatched names between hr and payroll come on if you say manually it will take long time because 135 employees you have to check it's not easy to check manually name by name so through audit software they will do it very quickly within seconds Okay, so audit software identify unmatched. There will be some unmatched names, some names that is in the HR, not in the payroll, or in the payroll, not in the HR. Obviously, in the payroll because in payroll is more. Next, the three names that is there in the payroll. Okay, identify duplicated bank details for them. Using the software, identify duplicated bank details, which indicates additional names are fictitious employees. There should be bank details because you have paid them. So check them. Then physically verify the employee to confirm existence that they are there. Physically verify. Then, if the employees do exist, let's say the three additional they exist actually they exist. Discuss this with the HR manager. Why? How employees have been able to join the company and be included on the payroll without having been added to the HR? How did this happen? You have to discuss this with whom HR manager, because. when a employee joins a company first they are included in the hr but here the thing is in the payroll they are there without being added to hr first how is it possible you have to discuss this with the hr next for people in the payroll that do not exist let's say they do not exist the worst case scenario then you have to review the hr record to ascertain if they are leavers there could be someone who have left who have not been removed from the payroll system and follow up this with the management and the last is if people included in the payroll do not exist then see the payment with the bank account to check the payment and raise the fraud with the management then it could be a fraud we check all the possible scenarios first once we have confirmed that it's not none of them then we say a fraud has taken place it's not in the first instance only we start doubting okay a fraud has taken place no 
auditors don't do that normally okay now second example revenue cutoff you must have seen revenue cutoff this is a very critical stage because this is the area where most of the preparers of financial statements try to manipulate they put some revenue in the next year they do not recognize full revenue or they recognize the next year's revenue also this year they bring forward right so now here you have been given the invoice date okay and if you see majority of the month of the april the time between order being received and the date of the sale invoice is between 2.5 and 3.5 see here this part if you check here the graph is from 2.5 to 3.5 this area you see order being received and the date of the sale invoice it's 2.5 to 3.5 days during this period however as the year end that means at 30th april what happens order processing reduces to zero here then it returns to the normal processing a few days later then again it goes up which is in the par with this 2.5 to 3 so here what's happening this indicates manipulation of revenue cut off okay and it could be that revenue is overstated obviously who will try to understate revenue a fool will do that right mostly revenue is overstated only so orders that have been invoiced during uh, sorry before the year end may not have been processed or dispatched and therefore perform an obligation not fulfilled meaning they should not be recognized with the revenue okay that see before the year end normally what happens orders that have been invoiced may not have been processed or dispatched that means you have not performed your performance obligation very rightly in the year end. but what happened they still recognize in the revenue even though it is it should not be recognized as the revenue accounted to IPRS 15 okay so here the auditor should trace order from 24 to 30th April this period 24 is this from here to here this period because here it is very high here it is zero so during this period is reducing during this period this is the area where they have the auditor has to trace to see the associated good dispatch notes okay and to verify the date the order was fulfilled and trace this sale invoice to sales day book to ensure the sale has been recorded in the correct period any orders not fulfilled by 30th april should be added to the schedule of uncorrected misstatement growing use of data analytics in an audit okay audit data analytics you must have heard about it and if you have not heard about it it's perfectly all right because you don't have to know the depth of all this uh, softwares and all. what you need to know is the impact of data analytics in audit process which stands for ada okay so ada is an art of discovering and analyzing pattern Basically, data analytics packages helps you to analyze pattern, see some kind of inconsistencies or deviation, and extract other useful information relating to the subject matter. Okay. This could be done through modeling, analysis, visualization, and this helps the auditor to plan and perform the audit. Big data. You must have heard about big data in your other subjects big data means data which is very big very large and complex data so here technology plays a great role okay why because here the big data technology allows the auditor to perform procedures on a wide range of this data set rather than just going through a sample remember in anal date uh, sorry audit previously we have told auditors go through a sample right they take a sample and on that they do the procedure and then we come to a conclusion based on that on the population but because now technology is there to analyze this big data the good thing is you don't have to go through samples any longer you can perform the procedure on this big set of data through the data audit data analytics the software now what are the feature the features of this data analytics is 
It is like any data analytics package, but the purpose is this is for audit. That is the only difference. This allows the auditor to work on the 100% of the data rather than sample. And this reduces the risk also. Audit risk is reduced because you have a chance of testing everything. Everything is, comes under that rather than just going through a sample because in sample what happens, some things might not be picked up. So your material misstatement might go undetected. Second, results can be visualized now. Graphically, you can show the result, which is very easy for the user to understand. Because uh, we as user, okay, you take yourself and see if you are given uh, something which is explained in narratives, in uh, paragraphs and paragraphs with words and all, versus something which is explained through picture. Which one will you be able to pick quickly? You'll be able to understand which is explained to you through pictures, through graphs, because our brain is has been designed like that. Graphs helps us easier and it's faster to grasp an important information very quickly compared to words and tables and list. Okay. And it's very user friendly. Anyone can understand graphs and all. Okay. And it's very quick. Third, it helps the auditor to identify audit risk. It helps them to test the control. Also, substantive procedure could be done. But remember, even if it helps to identify risk and all, still auditor have to have their own judgment. They have to make the judgment to analyze those results and come to a conclusion. It is not a substitute for auditor's judgment. You cannot 100% rely on the system and say auditor can, uh, based on the system, auditor will give a conclusion. No, even those results needs to be tested. Analytical, sorry, as for analytical procedure, if you are planning to use analytical procedure through data analytics, the quality of ADA depends on the reliability of the underlying data used. It depends on the data that you have used. Input has to be correct. Then only output will be correct. ADA, you can incorporate this for a wide range of data. Okay, for example, you can extract data through your social media or public sector or industry or economic data. Example, one example is auditor can use this in analyzing journal that is posted to identify number of journal posted, number of journal posted manually, number of them posted electronically, number of people processing journal and number of the time, sorry, time of the day journals are posted. All this could be answered through ADA. If you do it through manually, it takes more time, it's very tough especially remember for 1,000, 2,000 journal. Auditor may conclude there's a higher risk of fraud this year compared to last if three things are there. Number one, number of manual increases compared to automatic journal. Why? Because in manual, it is easier to manipulate the accounts compared to automatic. Automatic everything is very uh, controlled and anyone can easily check, but manual, it's harder. Second, number of people processing journal increases if this increases you it's a warning sign auditor needs to be more aware why the people of journal who's processing journal increased and third journal that are posted outside the working normal hours it's a risk of fraud now benefits of ada benefit is number one audit procedures could be quickly done and a higher standard could be maintained okay rather than taking so much of time to gather information now they can take more time to analyze and interpret the result then audit procedure could be done on a continuous basis rather than at the year end third reporting to client becomes very timely you can timely report to the client or before the time also okay within weeks compared to months then Use of ADA can facilitate more frequent interaction between the auditor and the client. Then audit efficiency also improves because of ADA. You are less likely to make mistakes. So if efficiency increases, audit fee reduces. Audit fee reduces is a good thing for the client, but for the auditor, it's a bad news because they have to accept a lower fees. Coming to what it means for the profession, three firms, small firm, medium sized firm, large firm. For the large firm, it's good. Why? Because they have their own resource, their own money to invest in the computer hardware and software. They can design their own data analytic platform. They can train the staff. 
they can have a quality control they have all these resources for the small farm it is they might not be able to use the facility of it, the data analytics they cannot design their own data analytics software they do not have the resources but still the good thing is there are some external computer software companies that have designed software which is very much aligning they have developed such audit system that are going they are aligning with the popular accounting system like zero intuit sage okay third for medium sized firms even for them also resources are restricted but okay there are some some job that where medium sized firms can help which large firms cannot do they are restricted due to ethical standard for example all the listed company they want assurance on their system and control so in this field medium sized firms can come and do that large firms cannot do that why because they are not allowed to perform under ethical standard now limitations of ada limitation is data the data because everything on ada is dependent on the data only so data if it's not complete if it's not well controlled and if it does not come from a reliable source the analysis whatever you do is a waste second financial statement still contains material misstatement why because some areas you have to make a significant amount of estimate estimate has to be done for example on your depreciation on your profit doubtful debt provisions all this require estimates then even though you are using a software please do not underestimate the power of professional skepticism and the professional judgment by the auditor we still need it that's why auditors are never out of job you no machines can replace the work of an auditor that's a good thing if you are in the audit field now audit software is used to calculate ratios and this ratios you can use for analytical procedure second identify exceptional transaction for example let's say if you are giving a management fee or remuneration package for management if you want to see how much they are earning let's say more than 20000 who is uh, number of managers who are earning more than 20000 you can get this in one click okay so wherever you see identify such exceptional uh, transactions you can test them for further further you can do audit testing on them third you can extract sample and in a non biased manner if you are using software fourth you can check calculations in the client report then prepare lead schedule for the auditor to use in their working paper now moving on to our third part of this lecture that is initial engagement so we are done with obtaining audit evidence then we finish with substantive procedures and uh, data analytics now we are moving on to initial engagement that is initially when you engage okay we are talking about opening balances so for opening balances specifically we are talking about opening balances here okay for opening balances you have to see whether the prior period you need the opening balances of this year comes from the prior period closing balance it comes from the prior period which is carried forward so the you have to check whether the prior period was audited by another auditor or it was unaudited if it was so you as an auditor this year need to perform additional work for your opening balance because your opening balance this year don't forget comes from your last year's closing balance it is carried forward that's why you need to make sure that your last year's closing balance is also correct okay so according to isa 510 that is for initial engagement that means opening balance specifically opening balance requires auditor to take on a new client okay requires that when auditor takes on a new client they must ensure these things see if you are a auditor recurrent you are the same auditor for 5 years you don't have to do this procedure only the first time you have to do because next year you must have audited it right this year so next year you will carry forward even next year you will be the auditor but if it was unaudited or audited by someone else and you are taking on a new client the first time you have to do this that is opening you have to make sure opening balance do not misstate contain material misstatement second accounting policies has been appropriately applied even then consistently it has been applied and any changes in accounting policies are disclosed third okay so we are moving on to the audit procedures now audit procedures for opening balances are this 
you need to read the recent financial statements or auditor's report. Okay, from there you can collect the information for your opening balance. Second, determine whether the prior period's closing balance has been correctly carried forward or restated if it needs to be. Third, opening balance. Okay, whether the opening balance reflect the application of the appropriate accounting policy. Then review the previous auditor's working paper. Evaluate whether audit procedure performed in the current period gives evidence relating to opening balance and substantive testing of any opening balance where the above procedures are unsatisfactory. You come to a substantive testing of the opening balance when all the other procedures are unsatisfactory. You're not able to get information from any other area. Moving on to the implications. What are the implications of this on the auditor's report? Number one, if you are unable okay, to obtain sufficient appropriate evidence over opening balance, you have to issue a qualified or a disclaimer of opinion. Please uh, remember whenever something is done or if you are not able to get a evidence, you need to know what are the audit opinion. You have to know it. Okay. In your exam, you have to know what audit opinion will be. We didn't come to audit opinion yet. We'll be moving on to it. But still, you have to know what your auditor's opinion will be. If this is not done, what is the auditor's opinion? If this is done, what is the auditor's opinion? Each and everything you need to know. Okay. So if you are not able to get the evidence, opening balance, either qualified or disclaimer of opinion will be given. If opening balance contains misstatement, and it material affects the current period. Okay. And even the accounting policies has not been applied consistently, qualified or adverse opinion should be issued. Then, these are further reporting implications. Okay, just a minute. Okay. Number one, were the previous financial statements audited? You need to ask this question. Second, if it was audited, was the audit opinion modified? And if the previous opinion was modified, were the unresolved issues solved? And if, I mean, were there any adjustment because of the result of the audit? If there was some adjustment, you have to see whether your accounting ledger as well as the financial statement was adjusted or not. Now, problem comes when your prior period audit opinion is modified and matter still remains unresolved. So in this case, if the matter is material to this year, then even the current audit opinion will be modified. For example, let's say for inventory. Okay, if there is an inventory the last year, modification of the closing inventory last year, okay, and if it can affect this year's materiality, then even this year's inventory will be, this year uh, statement of profit and loss also will be. See, last year's closing balance will come to this year as an opening inventory in the current year statement of profit and loss. Okay, even this year, your audit opinion will be modified. Because last year's closing inventory is this year's opening inventory and this goes to statement of profit and loss. Now, the fourth and the last part of this lecture, which is corresponding figure and comparative. There are two things. So, according to ISS 710, we'll see how we deal with it. Here also, okay, auditor have to get sufficient and appropriate evidence about whether the comparative information is included in the financial statement that is included in the financial statement has been presented in accordance with the applicable financial reporting framework there are two categories of comparative information number one category is corresponding figure corresponding figure is those figure that that is shown right to the current year figure and other one is comparative financial statement that means this year financial statement is there even last year's financial statement is given in full why is this given only for comparison just to compare okay and if it's audited if audited, see if you are auditing this year and you are giving the last year's, sorry, I'm sorry, 
if the prior year's full financial statements are included within the current year annual report and if audited they should be referred to in the auditor's opinion you have to refer to this in your auditor's opinion audit procedures for this okay audit procedures for comparative corresponding will obviously be, obviously be less than the current period but it is limited to this area number one comparative information agrees to the prior year financial statements or not you have to make sure or when appropriate has been restated accounting policies you have to see the accounting policies whether it has been consistently applied this year and last year auditor should request a written representation from the management regarding whether restatement has been made to correct a material misstatement that affects the comparative information also even your comparative information is to be correct not just this year now what are the implications of this on the auditor's report for corresponding figure okay remember auditor's opinion does not refer to the corresponding figure why because the opinion is on the current period's financial statement as a whole including the corresponding figure but if the prior period's audit opinion is modified and matter still resolve remains unresolved current audit opinion will also be modified okay because it affects the comparability from this to last year then if a material misstatement is identified in the prior period an unmodified opinion was issued okay and the corresponding figure has not been restated what happens this year you have to give modified opinion okay in respect to corresponding figure you have to give a modified opinion then because you didn't restate the figure even if a material misstatement was there you have issued an unmodified opinion for the prior period but this year corresponding figure you have to you didn't restate it that's why you have to give a modified opinion and if the prior adjustment has been put through correctly you have done the adjustment to correct the material misstatement then unmodified opinion can be assured okay and you have to give this in your other matter paragraph an emphasis of matter paragraph okay to draw attention to the closure explaining the reason for the restatement of the opening balance why you have restated the opening balance if you want to give explanation for this you have to write it under emphasis of matter paragraph now comparative financial statement here auditor's opinion will refer to each period last year auditor's opinion will be something else this year it will be for this year if the prior period financial statements were audited by a different auditor or they were not audited then this year you have to refer it under other matter paragraph okay i think yeah so that's it we are finished now let's summarize the whole lecture we have started with evidence the principles and the procedures of ob obtaining evidences we went through that then analytical procedure and data analytics and opening balance and comparative so for procedure or to collect evidence evidence needs to be evidence needs to have two principles it needs to be sufficient which is on quantity as well as appropriate which works on the quality second substantive procedure okay we went through test of control checking the effectiveness of the control test of detail which checks individual transaction and analytical procedure okay then these are some procedure inspection inquiry observation analytical procedure use these verbs words or verbs analytical procedure it see it analyzes a relationship between two variables comparison ratios trend and investigate unusual fluctuations this is less than the test of detail okay and it works when large amount of data is there opening make sure that this has been brought forward correctly and even accounting policies are correctly and consistently applied so that's it for this lecture i shall see you in the next lecture with specific audit procedures for elements from this income statement and statement of financial position
like audit procedures for sales, audit procedure for purchases, audit procedures for cash book. That's it. And we'll be doing questions also. Thank you for watching and see you in the next lecture. Don't, don't, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and you can get all my videos under the AAA playlist. All the lectures are there. You can even download my lectures. What you need to do is go to about section of my channel, go below and go to SSEA material, get all the textbook and the revision kit of not just AAA, but AFM, SBL and SBR. And if you want to get the lectures the, on the PDF form, you need to go to my AAA lecture, click there and you will get all the lectures in the PDF form.